With the first Grand Slam just around the corner, we have to go through the rankings and what points are up for grabs and who has the most to gain and lose going into the Australian Open. Of course, it's worth 2,000 points for the men and the ladies and a lot of points from players last year who actually played well and have to defend those points, which is always the scary part for those players. But let's go have a look at the players who have the most to lose and most to gain. So starting with the women's side of things and most to lose, of course, Sabalenka, defending champion. She has 2,000 points on the line because she won the title last year. So she is really not going to gain any points and has to defend to kind of keep her spot. But back in her, she's got 1,300 points after making the final last year. So if she does go one better, she'll gain points. But again, has to make the final to at least keep all her ranking points. Lynette, she made the semi-finals last year. She's in a lot of trouble because if she doesn't replicate that semi-final, she will drop down the rankings and her ranking isn't super high, so she doesn't have too many other tournaments that can help her out there. And as a ranker, she also has 780 points from the semi-finals last year and she is coming in with a little bit of an injury concern, so got to keep an eye on her. She might drop out of the top 30 if she doesn't somewhat replicate that semi-final from last year. Points to gain for the ladies and this is the fun part because there's a couple of top 10 players here that didn't do well last year and have so much to gain. Starting with Ons Jabeur. She only made the second round here last year and has so many points to gain, not just if she makes it to the semi-final or final, but even if she makes it to the quarterfinals or the fourth round. She can really get a lot of points. Only has 70 points on the line. A lot of potential there. Maria Sakri, third round last year, 130 points on the line. So she can really gain a lot of points and she's going to be a feature in pretty much all of these videos going forward because the Australian Open was her best slam last year. She lost in the first round of all the others. So she has a lot of potential to gain a lot of points, not just here, but in the future slams. Dadj Maya, she lost in the first round last year and she really has a lot of points up for grabs or a lot of points that she can get. She's not too far away from top 10, so if she makes a decent run here, she could be in the top 10 and gain a lot of points from the Australian Open. And Naomi Osaka, she has no points to defend at the Australian Open this year, of course, coming in after a long period of time off, so really a lot of points up for grabs for her as well. On the men's side of things, points to lose. Novak Djokovic, of course, defending champion, 2,000 points on the line for him, but he's won this tournament so many times, you wouldn't be too worried about his ranking, and also he's got a bit of a buffer between him and Alcaraz. Stefano Sitipas, He's got 1,200 points on the line, making the final. And he is in a little bit more danger because he has got those points to defend, but also hasn't been playing well, has been injured. So a second or third round exit could really hurt his ranking. Tommy Paul made the semifinals last year, has 720 points to defend, which will be a little tricky depending on what draw he gets. And same with Hashinov, 720 points on the line, has to make the semis to defend that. And again, kind of like Paul, depends where he goes in the draw, because potentially some of those guys could play Djokovic earlier in the tournament than last year and really be in trouble. Over on the men's side of things, we've got Kasper Ruud. Only made a second round here last year. 45 points to defend, so if he is able to replicate that 2022 US Open run, maybe make a semi-final, even a quarter-final, he'll be able to gain a lot of points. Then on Medvedev, made the third round here last year, the hardcore specialist, a lot of upside, having made the final here a few times. Alexander Zverev, second round last year, only 45 points for him to defend, so again, if he makes a second week, kind of like Ruta Medi, which is totally possible because he has played well here before, he'll be able to get a big boost in that ranking points. And Carlos Alcaraz, he didn't even play last year, he has no points on the line, and I think a lot of us are expecting him to at least make it to the second week, maybe even to the semis or even the final. He has got nothing to lose at this tournament and probably the only player that's a real threat at this tournament that has nothing to lose. So there it is. They are the rankings, points up for grabs and the ones to lose over the next couple of weeks at the Australian Open. What do you think is going to happen with these ranking points? Do you think, you know, maybe Sabalenka's in trouble? Or do you think Djokovic is in trouble? Of course, he's got a wrist injury. I just can't believe how much upside Carlos Alcaraz has. Of course, didn't play last year, but the fact that we know he could probably win the Australian Open, he's basically playing for free. And if he gets a decent draw, maybe doesn't play some of those big hitters too early on, he might be able to win the whole thing and get 2,000 points, the maximum points, and really put pressure on Djokovic at number one again. Of course, Sviantec, Sabalenka, they're battling for number one as well. But Sabalenka has nothing to gain, so it's going to be impossible for her unless Sviantec completely falls off and then some. But let me know down in the comments below. What is the most intriguing part of the ranking points for the Australian Open? But the Australian Open starting in a few days' time, and it's going to be really interesting to see how the rankings look after this.